Apple Plinkers and all you Crossman Full Auto BB Gun enthusiasts and lovers. Um, as you all know, the magazines are the powerhouse of this carbine. Uh, if this guy's not working up to 100% uh, capacity, uh, then you know you bought an extra mag, you bought CO2, you bought BB gun, uh, BBs, you bought. Uh, you spent a couple hundred bucks on an air gun. You might have bought uh, a scope, and then if your mag is not working properly, then all you have is a super tactical paperweight. So today I'm going to share with you uh, what I've figured out over the years after reading all the comments, after watching all the videos I could watch, after shooting thousands and thousands of rounds out of my Crossman Full Auto BB gun. Um, I'm pretty sure I figured out, uh, the trick and how to get the most out of your, um, your, your CO2 full auto magazines. Now, um, you're probably saying, Hey, your magazine's already disassembled. Uh, I don't know how to disassemble it. Uh, how'd you get to this point? I'm going to put a link in the d description to uh, Big J's Outdoors and Air Guns. Uh, he has a video where he disassembles his, his mag and gets it to this point. And um, that video is a really great video. I would consider it, uh, I don't know, a, a proof video. If you want to prove that the mag that you just received or that you just bought, you got with your, your, your air gun, if you want to prove that it's not broken, <clears throat> uh, you want to follow the procedure that Big J does in his video. Because um, if you can go through his procedure, then technically your mag is functional. You don't need to send it back. You can make it work. It's not complicated. So a few of the basic things. Um, if you're going to avoid a warranty and fiddle around with uh, anything you buy, uh, you got to be comfortable if you're not comfortable, you go get, uh, go buy a cheap uh, air gun anywhere or uh, uh, an airsoft, you know, at your hardware store, the translucent ones there. Take apart anything, just see how it goes. If you're worried about scrapping a magazine, then don't, don't get into this. You need the proper tools. Uh, don't jerry-rig anything to try and unscrew or bang anything out of place. You are going to need a punch set. Um, you're going to need like a 1 16th punch. You're going to need almost a precision screwdriver. Not really, but this, this screw is kind of recessed and it's a bit small. Uh, you're going to need a small Phillips. So you can get inside of these holes right here. Um, hammer, of course. Uh, I got a chisel here for later when I show you how to pop off this guy. Um, also, in the basics, whenever you're disassembling anything in an air gun, especially any mechanical device, uh, you always want to take your time. Make sure I like working on a white towel because it reduces bounce and there's friction and contrast and. Um, but if you're just unscrewing screws and popping off covers, you might lose anything that's under spring tension. Like in this mag, if you take off this screw right here, the spring for your BB follower, that's going to pop it out. And if this pops out and then everything flies halfway across the room, uh, even if you disassemble this and you pop off the plastic upside down, well, your BB follower, uh, well, that's the follower, yeah. Your bolt catch mechanism thingy, that's just, that's not gonna, you're, it's gonna fall out and you won't know how to put that back into place. Uh, so always be careful, always be aware, take your time, uh, be gentle, and um, just always gently remove, always consider that the pin, once you take it out, stuff is gonna if you're careful at every step you're never gonna lose your your pins or your screws uh anyways so yeah first things first you want to make sure your mag is not 
completely broken or defective, you do the Big J's outdoor proof procedure. If you can get through that, then maybe your problem is your CO2 is popping out of here. Now, I've had other mags on pistols where CO2 comes directly out of the valve. And you can, you can disassemble the valve mechanism. I haven't done it yet because uh, I shoot indoors. My max range is, is like 43 feet if I consider the length of the carbine. Um, so CO2 and this platform is perfect for no wind. Indoors, 40 feet, these guys work amazing. You don't need to modify them. Uh, so I've never taken this apart. Uh, but if your CO2 is coming out here, then you got a problem if your valve. And um, from other, from the, like I said, from the magazines and my pistols that the CO2 comes out the top, I regularly have to disassemble it and reseat the valve and the seals inside and lubricate them. Because every once in a while, it, the CO2 is going to just spurt out the top. So, if your CO2 is coming out the out the top here, after Big J's procedure, or just, you buy it, you put it in, and the CO2, just send it back. Send it right back. If your CO2 is coming out the crack here in the seam, you might be able to fix it, but you might not be able to fix it. So, it could be popping out of this screw here. This does have a little O-ring inside it, molded onto the screw. So this guy needs to be seated. So if, if your CO2 is coming out the cracks of your plastic, make sure this guy's seated. If it's coming out through this crack here, well then that's a problem. Uh, if you seat this guy, or if it's coming out through here, and it, if you seat this and it's coming out, send it back. Because then I don't think it's worth it. If you just bought it, send it back to Crossman, it's defective. Um, if it's not coming out through there, if it's not coming out through the cracks, if it's not coming out through the top, I promise you, you can, you can finagle this guy to make it work. So, just to show you the insides, um, and also just a quick basic thing, when you're popping out pins, most air guns, most firearm manufacturers, the rule of thumb is left out and right in. So whenever you want to punch out a pin, usually, see this guy's in the firing direction, I'm going to punch out my pins left out. And when I want to put them back in, I'm going to put them right in. Um... There are manufacturers uh, overseas, like I think Glock... It's the inverse, but I'm I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Just uh, always be careful. These ones you can visibly see that the holes are smaller, so it's obviously a left out. I like using a roll of tape. You use the appropriate size punch. Just tap it in there. If you don't be careful and you pop it in, tap it out the wrong end or tap it in the the wrong side. You're going to shear your bore, and then everything's going to be loose, and it's you're going to have to replace your pin, and you're voiding your warranty here, guys. So always be careful. Always be willing to to waste, like, the 50 bucks, you know, Canadian that you spent on this thing. So just to show you guys the insides, just a couple little taps on these pins. I like using the roll of tape because my pins fall right in there. And now this guy's rough to get off. So I didn't want to pry anything in there. You could use a screwdriver. But I had a chisel that fits the exact width. Um, this little edge here. I didn't see any mechanical function to it. So it didn't bother me to tap on it. If you pry here and you kink it or dent it. Then you might lose the seal. I wasn't sure at the beginning where the seal was. So this is how it I chose to tap it out so I just screwdriver or chisel you put it right on the edge and you just give it a couple of taps now you see it opened up just enough 
Now this is going to be quick. I'm just going to show you the inside. There's just one seal. This is the only seal here. So if it's spilling out the crack, this is your culprit. And maybe you could polish the insides, but unless you're really motivated and you really want to, you know, if you polish it and then it's too big for your O-ring, it's still going to piss out the crack here. So if it's leaking here, if it's leaking up here, if this guy's seated and you can, you unscrew it and you see there's an O-ring and it's still coming out, send it back. You got a defective mag. I, I don't think it's worth the hassle. Um, okay, so we validated, and by the way, I've seen comments also about people jamming their spring, and guys, I'm sorry, but there's nothing for that. If you jammed BBs into this hole while the spring was up, uh, there's you broke it. It's just a spring, so you got to replace the spring, you got to disassemble it, take it out, find a spring that's kind of the same size. There's no uh, coming back from that one. Um, oh yeah, let me just pop these guys in so I don't lose these pins. Whoops, see I even put that guy in backwards, alright. Now, I'm going to share with you guys, we got through all of that, those were, that was the basics. So, um, just a quick history, bought my DPMS in uh, 2018, and I all immediately bought two spare mags. I got a mag with my Bushmaster, and I got a mag with my A4P. I bought the quick QR mag. Um, I put in two CO2s. I put in some Hornady Black Diamonds, because these guys are the favorites for the original, the original speed loader. So I figured if they were good for the original, they must be good for this guy. Uh, my first 25 rounds loaded perfectly. And I, oh, this is going to be amazing. I don't need to speak. This, oh. 25 rounds, then I got to my second 25 rounds and I couldn't load them anymore. Um... I didn't open it. I didn't try and troubleshoot it. Uh, I have five mags. I prefer cycling through different mags to let my CO2 rest. So I've never felt the need for that. But if you're wondering if you should buy an extra mag, you should buy it. No, just I would recommend getting just a regular mag. You want to cycle those CO2s. Because if you, even if you fill this guy up with 250, 300 BBs, there's only two CO2. So if you load it, full auto dump your, your mag, load it again, full auto dump, load it again, full, you're back at the same place as if you just had one mag, you're just freezing up your CO2s. So anyways, that's my thoughts on the QR mag, uh, we're not really getting into that today. Um, Alright, so at this point, now I'm going to show you my, my trick. This is the trick, and ever since I've figured this out, I have... I, I haven't had a full CO2 dump on me since. Uh, oh my god, 13 minutes. Sorry guys, I'm not a professional. I'm, I'm kind of winging it. This is my third, fourth take. Um, I'm, anyways, okay. So I can't find my other extension, but you're going to have to remove these screws here. You're going to have to be able to get in there. Don't use a skinny f flathead. Because if you go in between your locking ring, you might actually damage um, you might actually damage your piercing your piercing needle. And yeah, anyways, I, I'd recommend making sure you got a, a fat enough flathead. This guy comes and this handle comes in the uh, Umarex the Umarex kit. Twenty bucks. It's really worth it. This guy is gonna... It's the basics. You need at least this. You're gonna need extensions. I can't find my other extension. I probably left it at the range. But you need to be able to get in through this hole. And all the way to this locking screw. So, this guy, you might have noticed. I put defect on it. This is years old. I haven't erased it. I need to erase it. It's not defect anymore. I figured it out. Um... So your check valve is right in here. 
Now this guy, after watching Big J's video, and it, I couldn't replicate Big J's video with this guy. So I decided I have nothing to lose. I got four other mags. I'm going to take it all apart. I'm going to shine a light in there. I'm going to see. So I took off this ring. Uh, I even thought about jamming one of uh, uh, this little pick thingy. Uh, try and, uh, and pull it out. But this green seal here is behind the threads. So if you pull out that green seal and if you pull out your piercing needle... Uh, I wasn't entirely sure if I would be able to put it back together and keep a seal. I was 50-50, I would probably damage something. And on top of that, I still haven't found any schematics or any videos of anybody who knows exactly what's inside there. It might be just a, a bearing, a check valve, just something super... I don't know. I have a feeling there's a spring... Uh, I, I don't know. Anyways, so this guy, when I tried to do Big J's proof video, I put in my second. This screw was on, and I was expecting it to come out the first, but it didn't come out the first. I screwed in my second, and nothing happened. Um, So, pull out the screw, then it dumped out. Uh, did it dump out? I don't know. It, it's been a while. But uh, what I figured out is, if this locking ring, uh, okay, well basically, if your problem is that you put in the first and it pours out the second, then that means that your locking ring here, it's not, uh, it's not seating the mechanism properly. Um, if you put in the second and it's not coming out here then that means that this locking screw is too deep and it's too tight inside and the same goes for this if this if your first one's not working properly it's either because your locking screw is too slack or it's too it's probably too tight um, but that's the issue now when I put in a first, after I disassembled it, and I decided to not disassemble it, I put in a first, uh, it didn't, uh, and it was hissing through the second. And that's not, that's something that it wasn't doing before. So I knew, I just, I put in my extension screwdriver, I, I torqued it down a little bit, and it stopped hissing. And that's, that's when it clicked. That's when I realized this is what the problem is with the mag. So, um, yeah, if you put in the first, comes out the second, means this isn't tight enough. If you put in the second and it comes out here, or it doesn't come out the first, it means it's too tight. So once your your ring here is in the middle, it can't be too tight, it can't be too slack. Once that's in the middle, you can still squash it with your CO2. If you're not careful, you you need to tighten in the middle. So you put your two CO2s in, and now my technique is you seat your your screws. Oh my god, we're going on 20 minutes. Sorry guys, I'll, I might edit this. I've never edited anything before. Alright, so now they're touching. They're not pierced. They're just touching that piercing needle. My, my trick, if you stick around... Here's the trick. All right. So you drive the first in home. You just drive it home. All right. It's driven home. Second one, nothing's coming out here. Nothing's leaking anywhere. You drive in your second. You drive it in. Now both are driven in. No CO2 is leaking. Now the trick is you just back out your CO2 and you listen carefully. As soon as you see it hissing, I uh, see it. Sorry. As soon as you hear it hissing, as soon as you hear a little hiss, stop backing it out and just snug it back in. And the hiss should stop. Now you go to your second, you back it out. Just back it out, back it out. You hear a hiss, snug it back into place. I guarantee you, uh, if you follow this, if you just back it out and snug it back into place, you will get through both CO2s 
all the time, 100% of the time, you will go through five, six, seven, eight mags of your semi-auto plinking. Um, this is the way to uh, wrangle this magazine into uh, submission. Oh man, almost 20 minutes. Well, oh, shit, 20 minutes. Okay, guys, let's wrap this up. One last thing, if you want to go beyond what this, what you can get out of your Crossman, uh, I'm going to put a link into Rumble Canada. He's, he's really putting it out there and pushing his Crossman to the maximum. Uh, he has a, a bunch of Crossman videos, and they're really amazing. So, uh, oh man. Let's hope this duration doesn't kill me. Maybe I'll I'll try and edit it, but like I said, I'm not a professional. Um, yeah, that's my trick to getting to getting ultimate uh, performance out of these magazines, guys. Uh, I'll see you next time.